Hello everyone and let's begin another very interesting video and this is kind of like a part two of how to get people to think like you how to get others to adopt the same mindset as you and there will be I believe um, six more principles so we talked about four principles last video and there's a total of 10 so I'll give you the other six on how to get people to think like you in this in this video here so principle number five is to start by stating what you guys both agree on so the things that you guys both agree on you probably both agree on the result but you just differ on the methods or the process on how to achieve it so don't make the person um, say no is what this principle um, talks about as he or she is not accepting when they do so you want to put them more in the affirmative direction um, you want them to say yes so what you have to do is you have to because you have to try to do to make the other person say yes as much as possible so when they say no their pride really clings to that note really sticks to that no and they're more likely to reject your proposal or or lead to withdrawal um, but if you make them say yes then one yes is like a, um, is going to cause more and more yeses to take place kind of like a domino effect so if they say yes once they're more likely to move in the affirmative direction as time passes so you want to do you, you have to think about how you can make the other person answer yes to your questions and this is called the Socratic method whereby you ask the other person questions that they will agree with and not ones that will force them to say no as that can lead to withdrawal only then nicely share your perspective once um, you got the other person to agree with you principle number six um, is to ex express other people's allow them to express their interests so others want to talk about themselves so it's best to listen and let them express their interests. if a person has a problem or complaint listen and ask them questions so you can better understand their problems don't interrupt actually listen with an open mind and encourage them to keep talking to keep sharing their ideas example the mom of her child never listened so she, ne she never listened to her daughter and always interrupted her to do more chores so instead of listening she forced her to do something and of course that didn't help her daughter because the girl just wanted to be listened to so the thoughts in her mind remained and the thoughts and the feelings right all that and then the mom realized she never listened and did all the talking but the relationship improved when she let the daughter do most of the talking as she was able to express her thoughts and feelings and she was able to tell her mom what her wishes are so you want to encourage others to talk about their needs and desires by letting them do all the talking so this principle is about listening and getting other people to talk and express their interests because others actually want to talk because that aligns because that helps them ex express um, their feelings and needs and desires that are important for, for, for their pride and feelings of self-worth and self-importance. The seventh principle is to let others come up with their own ideas and conclusions. So you just want to make suggestions so that others can come with their own ideas. Don't force your ideas upon them. We prefer being consulted on our point of view and and we want to share it with other people. And Mr. Wessens is an example the author gives. Mr. Wessens' sketches were accepted by the stylists because they were based on the buyer's ideas and how they wanted to have them done. Why care about the credit of having the idea of our own if we're only if we're only after the result anyways? So you want to write down the questions to ask the other person party to better understand the requirement and expectations of what were of what you are supposed to do based on how the other person wants it it makes the other person feel important the eighth principle is understanding how you would react if you were in the other person's shoes 
you want to understand his or her point of view, say what the listener wants to hear based on how it will benefit him or her so that you can get better results. So you want to understand and accept the other person's point of view. You want to be open-minded. You don't want to be certain that you are right because then you won't be open to listen to the other person's perspective. So think of some reasons why the other party will agree with you and really understand their point of view and why they're saying what they're saying, the rationale behind what they want, really understanding their perspective. The ninth principle is to say the following. I don't blame you for feelings as you do. Um, like I don't blame you for it, how you feel because um, if I was you, I would undoubtedly feel just as you do. And be sincere when, when, when you say that. So you understand how the persons feel, you show sympathy towards them, and you tell him that I would feel the same if I was in his position. People act differently depending on how they were raised and the environment and circumstances in which they're in, how they grew up, their problems, etc. So um, therefore, they should not be disc discredited for anything because it's not their fault. So knowing how they were raised and the circumstances that they're in helps you understand why they think and act in a certain way. Helps you better understand their feelings, their emotions, their motives, and their desires and their wishes. So you want to control your temper when you react to the other person's proposals, requests, needs, wants, wishes, etc. And you want to be sympathetic and kind to their feelings. People want self-pity and crave sympathy. So if you're able to sim sympathize, sympathize, if you can sympathize with their needs and desires, they're more likely to um, they're more likely to be more agreeable with you and more soft with you. So you want to be kind, you want to you want you want to show sympathy to them and if you, and if you do so, they will show sympathy back to you as well. So you want to show sympathy and understand where they're coming from based on how they are raised, based on how they were living their life when um, when they were small, their upbringings, as well as the problems that they're facing right now, really, un really understanding their situation so that you can better understand why they're acting the way that they do. And then the tenth principle, the last one in part three, is to understand to understand that people have two reasons for doing things: one that sounds good, and one is, that is the real one. The the one that sounds good is based on um, based on noble motives so people are idealists and like to think of motives that sound good we need to appeal to nobler motives to get people to change and and we want to consider people as what they think uh, is noble based on the motives that they consider as noble such as being honest sincere truthful fair and challenging them to live to their best selves and exhibit the qualities that they think are noble i'll give you an example that the author gives in a book for example, a tenant was deciding to break his lease four months early. And instead of pointing out the consequences and, and yelling at a tenant or forcing him to pay, um, um, he, um, he said, Mr. Doe, or whatever the tenant's name was, I've listened to your story and I still don't believe you intend to move. I sized you up when I first met you as being a man of your word. Take a few days to think it over and if you still intend to move, I will accept your decision as final. So um, the landlord um, wanted, of course, to have the tenant finish the lease for four months and pay on a monthly basis to pay the rent. But, but the tenant didn't want to finish the contract and he wanted to leave four months early to, to just pay for that month and that's it. So finish it four months early. But the landlord told him, I know you are a man of your word you're so you're honest you're truthful and and of course this is something that appealed to the tenants higher nobler motives and therefore the tenant actually paid the bill and decided to stay and so by appealing to, to the tenants nobler motives the landlord um, um, persuaded him to pay the bill and stay for the other four months so people react favorably and better if we consider them as honest and truthful and 
and if we tell them that they have the qualities that they consider are noble and that they consider are important for being the best versions of themselves. So work out some traits that the person wants to embody and use them to get the person to do as you wish.